The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Hi everyone and welcome to the episode of Gen XYZ where we bring to you pressing and content provided to the youth of Sri Lanka. So with the current COVID pandemic, we have seen the global impact with two adults and children have been severely impacting their current lifestyles. According to many reports, they mentioned that almost 900 million youth has been affected globally with the nationwide lockdowns. We have seen them changing their lifestyle in terms of education, employment, and also overall social engagement. So to help bring light to discussion and joining us as a guest in today's show is Dr. Mishan Dutrasa, who is a child and adult and psychiatrist. Thank you for joining us today, doctor. Thank you for inviting me. So if I can pose my first question to you, doctor, on how exactly has, what are the common effects we have seen with regard to youth and children, adults, and on how they have affected their lifestyles with the rise of the COVID-19 pandemic? What are the common symptoms that we may have seen? So humans are social creatures. They like to interact with each other. If they can't interact with each other physically, at least they would like to interact through social media. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many teenagers and many youth have been confined to their homes. Universities have been closed for a long time and also schools have been closed for a long time as well. So when teenagers can't meet their friends, smile with each other, share some jokes, the social communication and the social skills get impaired and also there can be a lot of emotional frustration of seeing their parents every day from morning to night and having to be in, inside the home without going outside. So sometimes we may see this as not so significant because it's not like you actually get in the COVID, you are just at home, but this mental health impact is enormous. So studies done all over the world have shown that about 15 to 20% increase of mental health problems have been seen among teenagers and youth. So what are the mental health problems that we see mostly is mainly anxiety, depressive symptoms, screen addiction, video gaming addiction and other related issues. And in Sri Lanka, we have done some research in University of Colombo, University of Sri Javardhanapura as well as University of Kalania. We have seen generally there's a 20% increase of percentage of young people with mental health problems compared to previous years. So the mental health impact, I will say, it's enormous. So we've seen an increase in mental health problems with the rise of the COVID-19 pandemic then, unfortunately. Yes. Doctor, you mentioned that due to a lack of social engagement, we have more anxiety and depression and such. But also I think with the current pandemic, we see um, engaging socially with your friends, peers and such is a bit restrictive right now. Unfortunately, how there are also many repercussions that can be faced by, gener by future generations if they do not strictly abide by the current COVID-19 safety rules. What are the usual, what do you think that can be seen in the future if the youth and adolescents do not stick to the current um, COVID, safety, COVID safety rules? So, uh, in Sri Lanka, if you go to buy something to a shop, let's say there are two people uh, in front of us waiting to buy something, usually people even before COVID, usually do not respect the physical space of another person. Yeah. Usually they come and stand very close to you, especially in buses. So this sense of physical awareness was not there. Now suddenly when the COVID-19 came, you were supposed to keep one meter first. Now it says to be two meters. This is very important, isn't it? If you don't keep this physical distance, you can easily contract COVID and it can be a uh, lot of negative repercussions. So because of this, it has been difficult for some people in Sri Lanka to keep these COVID health restrictions going on. So it is something we need to learn. For example, if you go to Melbourne or if you travel to United Kingdom, people always respect their physical space. When you sit, if they are some space that can be provided, they will sit a bit far away from you. So this is very important, especially for youth. If they want to take over the world, 
if they want to go abroad and learn new things and come back to Sri Lanka and uh, develop our country, this physical awareness and mental awareness is very important and I think this is a great opportunity for them to learn it. So especially in schools, universities and such, it's important that they maintain the physical distance with other friends and peers as well. Dr. Now speaking with regard to the current uh, vaccination drive of the youth uh, implemented in, the, in our country, uh, do you think that we are on track in comparison to other countries across the globe? Uh, what I can say is that we have done impressive amount of vaccinations comparative to our regional counterparts. Now yeah. we have to remember we have a lot of restrictions. We don't produce vaccines here. We have to get them down from other countries. Even though we have the financial capacity, you have to understand that those countries produce vaccines first for themselves. If the stocks are more than their requirements only, they will allow us to buy their vaccine. So because of that, what we have achieved up to now, I think I am very happy. For example, uh, a few years back I worked in Australia and I am so happy that most of the doctors who are still working there got the vaccine far later than me. Because I, I, I even though I am in uh, uh, Sri Lanka, I received the vaccine far earlier than them working in Australia. So because of that and given the appropriate vaccination for the youth is very important because they move around. Yes, we vaccinated the elderly and people with medical disorders first. It's understandable the mortality is high. The mortality in the youth is less, but they move around. They have to work, they have to talk to people, they have to interact. So vaccinating youth and teenagers is very important. Uh, the issue with that is guidelines for vaccinations keep on changing because yes. this is a new pandemic. Scientists are learning new things every day. So sometimes they say, uh, first month they say you have to vaccine up to 15 years. Mm -hmm. Then they change it so the people get confused and the medical professionals are also, they need to work on new research. So it's a changing dynamic. But at the moment, I'm so happy with what we have achieved. That's great. So I think compared to other countries, we are doing slightly well in terms of vaccination drive then. Yes. How about children and adolescents who would attend school, um, Doctor? I think uh, there's quite some limitations there as well with the current criteria of only one jab per student. Um, what do you think about that and do you think it's, um, it's practical with regard to the current situation? So what we have to understand is if you take many countries in the world, only some countries have vaccinated a significant proponent of proportion of young people. So the data available for significant amount of countries are not yet available. Yeah. So what we can say is that in the acute and short term there are no sinister side effect of vaccination especially for kids and young people. The other factor we have to consider is anyway the mortality is less in young people. True. So if we say we have to wait until we vaccinate all youth vaccinate all school children to start school and university, I don't think that's realistic because okay. it's a step by uh, process. Because first, in Sri Lanka, we vaccinated children with certain disorders like uh, disabilities, long-term medical disorders okay. because the mortality is higher in them. And if you consider the children admitted to the Lady Ridgeway Hospital and the other children's hospital, the morbidity and mortality were higher in children who have other disorders, okay. not healthy children. So because of that, they were vaccinated before. So some of the older teenagers have been vaccinated and obviously from 20 to 30, there have been opportunity to get vaccinated. So I think this is now the time to go ahead with academic work. Okay. So if new guidelines come, if the World Health Organization says, okay, the time has come to vaccinate up to 12 years and below, then we can proceed to those things. Definitely. Now, Doctor, I think we see with many adults and youth, they do have a very dynamic mindset and very critical thinking as opposed to um, with more adults and such. So we have also witnessed a slight remorse from the youth in terms of getting vaccinated and such due to uh, potential side effects and uh, stuff like that. How exactly would you address this that problem, uh, Doctor? To be honest, I'm a bit disappointed with the youth mm -hmm. generation because I thought uh, people in my age will be scared to get vaccinated, okay? That is understandable because some of us have some other disorders as well. But I thought from 20 to 30 year olds, they yeah. will be flocking to get the vaccination. But I was a bit disappointed to see that our future generations are a bit reluctant 
in uh, reading actually scientifically valid data and getting this vaccination. Obviously, there was some confusion about the type of vaccine, mm -hmm. but what World Health Organization is telling is that get the vaccine, you can get earliest as possible, possible because all the vaccines that were available in Sri Lanka were approved by the World Health Organization and they have been used in other countries and they have proven to be successful in bringing down the severity of the illness. So because of that, it is important to get your vaccination. So if any youth who didn't get vaccinated, please get vaccinated soon as possible. It's very exactly. important. And because you are the future of this country, you have to be social role models to us even. Exactly. So that is very important. You have to teach us that scientific information is more important than anything else. Exactly. Now, with a, with a psychiatric point of view, um, Doctor, what do you think led to this thinking amongst the adults and youth uh, in in their lack of confidence with the current in being vaccinated? So, in psychology, we call this concept negative attentional bias. Okay. For example, let's say uh, you face a, a traumatic experience at your workplace and you are in a distressful state. When you are driving back home, you will notice more negative things. Okay. You are unlikely to notice things like a beautiful flower mm -hmm. or something very nice on the road because your mindset is negative. Okay. So during the pandemic due to economic problems, uh, lack of opportunities for work, learning, our general society negative uh, mindset is there. So when your general mindset is negative, you tend to focus more on negative things as well. So if you look at social media, you can see people who are not that critical and hostile yeah. has suddenly become very critical and hostile. So when few people share these negative information, sometimes these are misinformation, false information, they get spread very rapidly. Exactly. Also because people were at home most of the time, not going outside, they had more time on social media and sharing some of this misinformation. Uh, what I see is very unfortunate condition. So, exactly. uh, so sometimes uh, when people hit the share button, they don't think what the impact is. But True. I think the share button is the most dangerous button to click. Whenever you click it, please be responsible. I think also with the use of social media, youth has been a bit, uh, their access to technology is also, and also information is quite vast and uh, diverse. How exactly could they filter their content, doctor? What, what, what are the best methods that they could use to really um, make sure they use the best content out there without really um, taking use of all these unnecessary content that's available everywhere in social media? So the key word here is social responsibility. Mm -hmm. Let's say I go to Unavatna, I go to the beach, and I eat a ice cream and I want to dispose of the wrapper, mm -hmm. I have to put it to the correct garbage bin, isn't it? Right. But I don't live in Unavatuna. This garbage wrapper is not going to affect me personally or my kids. But it's a social responsibility. This is our country, this is our society. So it's a social responsibility. We do things for the betterment of the whole society and indirectly it will impact us in a positive way as well. So sometimes social responsibility is not highlighted enough in our generation, but you have to take it up because I can see that before this COVID-19 uh, struck us, many youth were drawing uh, pictures on walls mm -hmm. and they were posting them on social media. They were cleaning beaches, lot of social responsible projects. And Whenever you use social media, please be socially responsible. I think those are some key uh, advice that can be taken for all youth in Sri Lanka. With that, we're now taking a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more on Gen XYZ. Welcome back. Today we're speaking to you on the impact of COVID-19 and its impact we see on adults and youth in Sri Lanka. So, Doctor, I think um, with the current um, criteria of only one dose per vac one dose of the vaccine to children and, and adults, and so what do you think of the practicality in that? Do you, do you see it being useful or is it effective in being having in having only one dose of vaccination? So, what I can say is that the immune response in different age categories is completely different. So, okay. at the moment. 
that is a recommendation and we are going ahead with this recommendation because uh, at the moment it will help us to start school and start with the higher grades. Okay. But if more data is available from other countries, then we can proceed. For example, any tablet or a medication given to a young person, uh, there has to be usually uh, data coming from many countries before you give to local uh, children. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, because uh, our own research is sometimes not there, we will uh, rely on information coming from Western countries and Asian countries before we recommend some medication. But this is a pandemic and you can't wait until most research is available. Exactly. So you balance it out between the risk and benefits. So at the moment, the benefit is giving this vaccination to young people. But in the coming months, when there's more data is available, it may change. So at the moment, soon as your age category is available to get the vaccine, get it and move on with your learning activities. Sure. Now, with, I think with global lockdowns across, across nations as well, we have seen it has impacted many uh, children in attending schools and such. What do you think of reopening schools, doctor? And do you think it's safe to reopen schools with the students who aren't vaccinated? Yes. So, obviously, uh, the primary education children and middle school children are not vaccinated yet. So, in that category, school is so important. So, sometimes people ask, uh, doctor, can you tell me please, what is the most important period in school? Is it the maths, is it science, social studies? Mm -hmm. Actually, the most important time is the playtime. Because playtime, you interact with your peers, you generate capacity to work as a team, you empathize with others, you read their emotions in their faces, and you develop emotional understanding, empathy. I think empathy is something very important for our children. So when there's no school, you see your mother and father's face all day, yeah. and sometimes there will be a lot of instructions to study, mm -hmm. write letters. This can be very boring for kids, because it's not similar to physical education. So it is very important that we open schools, and parents obviously may fear sending their kids to school because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But you have to understand that even though children may contract COVID if they don't follow the health restrictions, mm -hmm. still the mortality and the impact on them is far less than elderly population and adults. So sure. if you can carefully uh, analyze the data from Sri Lanka even, the mortality has been more in children who have other disorders. In that sense, you have to get vaccinated and uh, use uh, significantly more precautions. But for generally for children, going to school and uh, enabling their psychological development and personality development is far more important. True. Now, I think with being, with being in lockdown and staying at home it might have also severely affected children, adolescents and youth in terms of their psychology and um, their thinking and such. How do you think getting back to school would, uh, would it be, a, it be a, I think, a drastic change with regard to their environments and such? How could they best get back to it, doctor, and help them stay on track as well? So there are two things. Now, if you have been at home for two years and if you are going back to university or school, it's going yeah. to be a challenge. But you have to remember that unlike adults, young people's minds are more neuroplastic. That is, the neural networks in the brain of young people can change rapidly compared to adult. Okay. So they adjust faster compared to adult. So even uh, when I go to pick my son, I can see all the parents very close to each other waiting near the gate. Yeah. But the kids keep the two meter distance and they have learned it within one day. So because of this, kids have the capability of adjusting to new environments. That is the neuroplasticity of their brain. Okay. So if you give them good guidelines, for example, when they enter the school, there should be a big banner or a poster saying, please follow these instructions. Mm -hmm. The prefects, student leaders need to monitor it, whether the little kids are following it. And before you drop your kid near the school, please remind them, please use the sanitizer, please wear the mask, please use the face guard. If you keep reminding them, they will follow. And after a few days, it will be in their mind all the time. Uh, then, but there can be risks. So if uh, a child gets COVID, obviously you can uh, stop that classroom only for some time. 
and but the rest of the school can go on. But going back to school and learning is very important because as I said before, the personality development is the key because True. personality of each child has to contribute to the betterment of this country in the future. Exactly. Otherwise, they will be a frustrated generation that will not help the country. Definitely. And in getting back to school, Doctor, I think uh, most uh, kids and students would look to engage with their peers as much as possible. Um, in terms of your point of view, what do you think are the best methods they could resort to in mitigating the risks of being contacted with COVID-19? Obviously, uh, many young kids come and tell me, uh, Doctor Uncle, I'm so disappointed, I can't go to school and play. Yeah. So, but still, they can talk to each other, keeping a two meter distance. Uh, say some funny things, do some activities together. They may not be able to sit very close to each other, but drawing pictures, you draw a picture and show to your friend, he smiles, he interacts, and uh, the, your friend sings a song. Or when you are learning, especially what we call reflective learning. For example, if the teacher asks a question, let's say she asks, uh, what should we do to help uh, reduce the COVID-19 spread. A uh, One kid will give an answer completely different to another kid. Okay. So when you give two answers, you listen to other people's answer and you learn from it. Why did that person think like that? So this is reflective learning. You, you say your answer and you learn a lot from other people's answer. So this is the key to teamwork, sometimes a bit lacking in our system. So it is very important. Uh, also, but uh, all the kids and obviously youth can interact through social media and obviously online. Uh, some days they can come to school when they are not at school. They can have in a responsible manner uh, chatting about important uh, topics and also they can have discussions online because discussing and uh, developing abstract thinking. Abstract thinking means how you look at a thing beyond what we can see is very important for the developing new things for our country and being creative. Exactly. Also, Doctor, you mentioned I think the most uh, important um, period or time in school is the playtime. Also, we would see them engaging in sports after school and such like that. How do you think they could best resort to safety methods in terms of when they engage in sports and activities and such like that? So, uh, I'm so sad about many kids True. who have played a certain sport from the under 11, 13, 15, 17 level and not been able to play the higher stage. Sometimes yeah. they were waiting to play the big match for maybe 7, 8 years, they were exactly. not available. Also, uh, like uh, debaters, like they were doing, doing debating for so many years, uh, quiz team members, also they have lost so many opportunities. Uh, looking back from our school days, those were the memories that we cherish, True. isn't it? So the victories. So it's, it's so unfortunate. But at the moment, some of the sporting activities at school have been allowed. So mm -hmm. some of the cricket matches have been allowed. But the kids and the teenagers have to show responsibility. True. They have to show to the parents, teachers and the authorities that we can be responsible. So the general, generally what adults think is, young people will not be responsible. But mm -hmm. actually what I see is these cricketers and other sports people at school are being more responsible than they does. Yeah. And that is very nice because then more and more opportunities will be given. Exactly. So doctor, also um, what do you think with regard to the right training that should be given to students and kids? I think it's with regard to the school administration, teachers and faculty staff members. What would you say is the right training they should, they should provide these students in terms of making sure that they have uh, zero risk, zero or less risk as much as possible in terms of contracting COVID-19 within their school? So, uh, if you take the teenagers, they are more emotionally driven. So, if okay. you take the adults, they are more rationally driven. They, because the thinking brain is more powerful in adults compared to the emotional brain. But if you take the teenagers, they take decisions on emotions. Sometimes maybe uh, if one of their teammates score a six, they may yeah. forget the COVID restriction for a few minutes, mm -hmm. they may cheer with each other. But if there are reminders frequently, when you say reminders, it should not be yelling at them. So there okay. should be clear uh, instructions posted on many places in the sports ground, in the classroom, 
telling okay keep two meter distance where is the face mask so it is very important so sometimes in some sports in contact sports sometimes wearing the face mask not be possible so then two meter distance is not possible but then you have to be responsible because they will be in a, uh, a bubble because uh, if one of them uh, be re irresponsible then okay. everyone else in the team can get it so it's exactly. very uh, important that if your son or daughter is playing in a sports team mm -hmm. where you can't keep the COVID-19 precautions to a certain level, you can't take them on a, a family trip in the weekend because mm -hmm. then you are putting many families at risk. So that is yeah. very important and parents have to remember that and also teenagers have to mindful even when they go home they have to keep following the precautions to safeguard themselves as well as their team members. Exactly. Doctor, I think you must be well aware as well. Uh, most children are quite different. They have uh, different thinking patterns and different methods of how they can react to situations as well. How, what do you think of the importance of now implementing some kind of counselling service within schools and making it um, easily accessible to all students when they get back to school with regard to their, uh, in terms of how they have spent almost two years now in lockdown and in homes. How, how could you ad, um, address the importance of implementing practical counselling solutions within schools and universities? Okay, before the COVID-19, uh, when we approach school authorities, mm -hmm. let's say if they have a certain amount of funds, yeah. if they ask them, okay, would you like to spend it on a computer lab or a school counsellor, mm -hmm. their easy pick was a computer lab or sometimes uh, something different. Obviously, there are certain schools uh, who needs things like uh, water, sanitary facilities, that is quite understandable. But sure. even some schools who are in big cities were not considering providing a counsellor or a school psychologist available in their schools because it was not considered the priority. But with the COVID-19, I think most of the parents, all boys, all girls and uh, parents have understood that it is very important because they have suddenly facing a surge of children complaining of screen addiction, video gaming addiction, feeling depressed, frustrated, right. getting angry. So it is very important. So sometimes people will think, okay, we have enough shortages of teachers. Why do we allocate a teacher for counseling? So we are losing another teacher who can be teaching at a school. Mm -hmm. But mental health is so important, isn't exactly. it? Without good emotional well-being, you can't teach math, science or whatever. So it is very important. So if you, if you don't have a designated counsellor in your school, but you can allocate one of the teachers available who right. is interested in helping kids and that teacher can easily participate in training programs especially conducted by professional organizations, government, education ministry and with time that teacher will gain experiences and after a few years you will have a very trained uh, structured counselling program in your school. Exactly. You, Doctor, you mentioned earlier on that there's a fear within parents in sending their children to school as well. In terms of uh, overcoming this fear, what do you say are the best tips that they could resort to in keeping their children safe within schools? So sometimes parents say, I will not send my kid until the pandemic is over. Uh -huh. Now already they have lost two years. So for a 40 year old person, Two years in life is a significant period, but it's just four, two years of, after 40 years. Yeah. But two years out of a nine-year-old, that's quite significant, isn't it? E also because they keep on changing every year, every month. Suddenly last month they were saying they want to be uh, an engineer, now they are saying they want to be a policeman. Mm -hmm. So they keep on changing. So because of this dynamics, if you wait until the risk is zero, you are depriving of your child of a lot of opportunities for their personality development. Sure. So if the risk is 100%, I can understand, okay, keep your child at home. But now the risk has reduced, you have to take a balanced decision and have to send them to school and allow them to gain this uh, emotionally nurturing environment from school. So it's a decision that you have to take. I hope the parents will take the correct decision and send their kids to school at this moment. Definitely. And with that now, we hope that you all identified that it's maybe okay and all right to get back to school and send your kids and be more engaged with your peers as well. With that now, we're moving on to a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more on this topic.
Welcome back. Now speaking to you on the impact of COVID-19 and what we have seen, how it has affected youth, adolescents and children in Sri Lanka. Doctor, I think earlier we spoke on the, how we could uh, open, reopen schools again and what are the best methods they should resort to in terms of mitigating the risks in terms of COVID-19 symptoms. Doctor, now speaking on a different note, of, um, speaking with regard to the economic crisis that has been impacted with the COVID-19 pandemic, I think I, I believe that it has severely impacted most youth and adolescents as well. What do you think of that uh, impact as well, Doctor? How has it necessarily impacted youth and children in Sri Lanka? So, people get motivated by two factors. Extrinsic factors and intrinsic factors. Intrinsic factors is uh, achieving your dream, your internal motivation to achieve something. For example, if you like journalism, you learn how to socially communicate at and interact with each other and you improve your communication skills. So that is the intrinsic drive. But youth also have extrinsic factors, opportunities. Mm -hmm. So because of the economic uh, issues, the opportunities for youth have been limited. Yeah. And sometimes youth may feel extremely frustrated and they may feel like giving up, migrating and changing their dream and wanting to achieve something that they don't like much. So I think this is a very negative uh, impact on the youth. And what I would like to say to young people is be patient. So in this moment, I know carry opportunities may be limited. A lot of private organizations may be saying we don't have funds to recruit new people. Yeah. And also, even when they recruit, the salary scales no, may not be that high. So, but uh, a career or a, your dream, achieving your dream is a long process and working in this kind of stressful period may be a good learning experience. So, many young people say, how can that be a learning experience? But mm -hmm. When you work under stress, it gives you certain coping skills. Right. Coping skills means you have a limited budget, you have limited time, but you have to achieve certain targets. So when you work like this, your time management skills, your management of team problems, deficiencies, uh, getting the team on the same page, there can be challenges. So these can be good coping skills to face future challenges. So it is very important. So take your time, don't give up your dreams and stay in Sri Lanka and contribute to the country. Exactly. Also with the rise of the pandemic, doctor, there has been new methods in terms of um, education and employment. We have seen uh, youth and children resorting to new trends in terms of education and employment. What do you think are the pros and cons of these new uh, trends, doctor? And do you think it would prolong even post pandemic as such? Definitely, because online education is very important. It's not only for the pandemic, it's a very important thing. It allows us to gain skills that is not immediately available for us. For right. example, there may be some degrees not offered by any of the universities in Sri Lanka, but it is offered from an overseas university. So if your dream is to go in that pathway, you may be the first person to qualify in that field in Sri sure. Lanka. So that is, that is very important, isn't it? New skills getting get into country. So in that sense, online education is very important and I'm so happy that the younger generation is able to learn most of these online education skills in a better way. But you have to be mindful that when you are in uh, primary school and middle schools, maybe studying hard or academic priorities were from your parents. But when you are getting to middle and late adolescence, please be self-responsible and achieve some self-control. Yes, obviously when you are listening to an online session or an online lecture, obviously there may be hundreds of YouTube videos or chatting platforms that you would like to engage. But when you engage in these uh, uh, non-educational activities for a long time, you are losing valuable time. So exactly. because of that, you have to develop some self-control. Self-control means nobody is yelling at you. Nobody is putting rules on you. You control your own behavior. And if you uh, travel to many developing countries, this self-control is evident when you travel on a road, when you are right. driving, when you go to a shop, and when you are waiting in a queue. This self-control is the key, I think. And younger generations, please be self-controlled and put controls by yourself for your screen time and online time. Exactly. 
and in terms of employment doctor i think uh, there has been some new jobs out there as well that has resulted with the covid-19 pandemic what do you think of these new trends in terms of in terms of employment how do you think the youth can adapt to that in terms of how it has uh, severely and globally also impacted the current youth in sri lanka for example because many people are using online platforms certain new jobs will be available online exactly. or maybe like uh, uh, over the telephone but uh, some people will say okay your job will not be available when the pandemic ends yes. but it will not be like that even when the pandemic ends this online platforms and uh, like telecommunication services will be there because people will change and uh, it's very important like for example if a person in ampara uh, uh, two parents want to show their kid to me i work in ragama to come 8 hours from there just to talk to me for 10 minutes or 15 minutes it's a lot of waste of time especially if the father and mother are daily wage earners but if you can have a telecommunication or what we call a tele mental health consultation mm -hmm. service so that will be very helpful for me it saves time for me because i can even from home can engage in the consultation service and it will be beneficial for parents as well then when you maintain such a consultation service there are new job opportunities there yes. should be people administrators to monitor these for payments and those things and we should be very mindful that even when the pandemic ends we should keep these job opportunities going on because it's very important for the development of the country exactly now what i think also with the pandemic we have seen uh, most tech organizations accelerating most virtual environment solutions to to our the current problems in the pandemic we also i think with the new, with facebook releasing meta as well we've seen them trying to implement uh, most virtual environments in the future as a psychiatrist doctor do you see any disadvantages or any cons with regard to implementing virtual environments in the future uh there are obviously good things and some disadvantages right. because if you are a young person there has to be a connection between the virtual world and the real world sometimes young people especially for example people who play internet games right they may be awake throughout the night playing the game because most of the people playing the game live overseas mm -hmm. and they may be sleeping during the day yeah so this disconnection between the real world and the virtual world can be very uh, sometimes uh, negative for the young person because whatever the job even when if even if you are uh, working online platform still you have to deal with real people real customers in the future because of that social skills of communicating with each other are very important and what we call a psychological concept called the theory of mind theory of mind is my ability to understand your thoughts and emotions so that is very important i look at you i look at your face i smile with you and i learn and how to read your mind so if you are my customer your needs may be completely different to the previous customer if i don't cater to you you are not going to come back to me isn't exactly. it so like because of that that social skills are very important so that is why you have to understand virtual world is a virtual world there's a completely different real world you have to make a connection and adults should show and guide young people in this regard also doctor i think um, a trend we see amongst adults and youth even before pandemic as well was where they would conduct in most exercise with regard to their physical health i think now with the with coming on to maybe post pandemic and uh, coming out of lockdown as well what would doctor what would you recommend are the best exercises that, that that we can resort to in terms of promoting good mental health within youth as well okay so physical health obviously a regular exercise eating healthy food is very important as well but if you take mental health the biggest barrier is the stigma okay. now uh, if you uh, travel to a affluent country if you talk to a teenager they frequently say a uh, doctor i am depressed or they will say my friend is depressed he is taking this treatment they don't try to hide it they, it's not something embarrassing for them it's something uh, they acknowledge they accept that and they accept that they won't help and they follow through with the management so obviously the older generation in sri lanka a mental health is a taboo topic and lot of stigma and discrimination are there 
for example, if you want to go and meet a psychiatrist or a psychologist, you yeah. don't go to the psychiatrist in your city, you travel 100 kilometers to avoid all your relatives getting to know that you are going to see a psychiatrist. But this is the, not the way forward because mental health is very important for the work efficiency. For sometimes people suffer from depression for years, they may be at the workplace, but their mental performance and work rate is low. So then you are not actually contributing as an employee. So this stigma, we need to overcome it and the best way to overcome is young people, especially celebrities, mm -hmm. coming forward in media and stating that what are the mental health difficulties I had. Because most people we know, one out of every five young people suffer from depression, one out of four adults suffer from a significant mental health issue. So celebrities, uh, people on media should come forward and accept that these are the difficulties I had, this is what I did, now I am better. I think that will be a good trend. But they can normalize, I think, uh, resulting to promoting good mental health in the future. Hopefully they can see reduction in these mental health issues with our coming generation as well. Doctor, also moving on to our discussion, what do you think organizations, institutions and companies could better do to help, um, to help children and youth get back on track post-pandemic situation? So, uh, what they can offer is that they have to be mindful of the mental health of young people. And every organization should make counseling services available if it is not physically possible. If, if there is a physical counsellor present in the organisation, people know not may not like to visit that person, but even an online way or even a text line. For example, sometimes we have seen from mental health research, young people do not like to call and get advice, they would like to text and get advice. So that is why the National Mental Health Hotline has a text line, 1926 has a text line as well. So every organization should have a counselling service or a mental health support service and I think when there are new recruitments, there should be a senior person as a mental health mentor to guide them in difficult situations. There should be a person in the organization when they have emotional frustration or need some mental health support, there should be time and there should be a person to go and talk to and this is very important and something we should learn from the pandemic. Are there some good examples out there, Doctor, of uh, organizations, companies who have taken some good methods in, um, in addressing mental health issues and how staff, children uh, or youth could get back on track in leading a normal lifestyle? Yes, the best example is Shanti Margam. Shanti Margam is a non-profit organization. It provides uh, counselling for any young person or adult uh, during the daytime. Right. So you can anonym anonymously talk to the counsellors and get okay. advice and sometimes Shanti Margam works with certain organisations and help them to build their own capacities in providing mental health supporters, supports for young people. And uh, some media companies and some private organisations, they have been now been vigilant about mental health and started their own services and uh, obviously we need more professionals in this regard but uh, I see a good trend and a positive trend in this aspect. That's amazing to hear, Doctor. I think now we've come to the end of our show as well. Moving on to our, my final question, Doctor, is uh, with the lack of opportunities and skills with the current pandemic, what do you, what would the best advice you give to youth and children on how they could better overcome these challenges and do well for the future? So, what I have to say for to young people is that you had a difficult time of two years with the pandemic, I understand that, but you have learned more things that we were not able to learn over a decade within few months. Maybe using online education, maybe communicating with each other on virtual platforms. Use that new important information and please contribute to the country to develop this country. And be mindful of your mental health. Never feel embarrassed to talk about your mental health with a friend adult or a counsellor or a psychiatrist because your mental health is very important for your happiness as well as the country. That's great. And on that note, Doctor, we we'll conclude our program here today as well. We hope as youth in our country that you all have learned something with regard to the discussion and hopefully it will help you all better mitigate the risk in terms of conducting COVID-19 and better do well in the future as well. In case you missed any of our stories tonight, we hope you all rewatch us on our YouTube page 
on youtube.com slash with that we are now concluding our show catch us next week on genxyz thank you for joining in tonight